you know, there's a lot of different theories about what in the world did Jesus' death accomplish? What did it do? What did it mean? Why did Jesus die? And, and you have to get in your mind some of the Old Testament here for just a moment, if I could. Uh, turn back to Leviticus 17.11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood by reason of the life that makes atonement. And then uh, just couple that, go over to your New Testament now in the book of Hebrews. This is after the death of Christ now, trying to figure out what it all meant. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22. According to the law, one may almost say, all things are cleansed with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And just turning back to Luke, that little phrase, for you, what does it mean? What does it mean that Christ died for you? Well, in theological terms, it's, it's the atonement. It's the atonement of Christ. It's, and, and, you know, over time and over history, a lot of people have tried to figure out what exactly Christ accomplished when he died. And some have suggested wrongly, the, for instance, the ransom theory, that somehow a debt was owed to Satan, so Christ had to die in order to pay off Satan. Uh, that's obviously wrong. I, I don't think too many of us would agree with that. Uh, then they got a little more sophisticated. They came up with ideas like the governmental theory of the atonement. Well, what does that mean? Well, God is sort of this cosmic ruler, and, and he has to punish sin, and so Jesus died as a sort of a, a general payment for sin but not specifically, not for you and I, okay? Or there's the moral influence theory. We love this one. We love this one in, in theological circles because it's a liberal view of the atonement, and that is that, that Jesus sort of just died as an example of love for us. That, that it's kind of showed, demonstrated love, and so we're now supposed to kind of live like Jesus lived and love other people. That's a liberal view of the atonement. So what did it accomplish? Well, going back to that Leviticus passage, it's, it's a life for a life, right? It's, it's the blood b which, which represents the life given in place of a life. The wages of sin is what? Death. Somebody's got to die for your sin. That's the point. And so now we understand this, this idea of the penal substitution of Christ. That is that Christ died specifically for you and your sin. That his life in exchange for your life. And beloved, when we celebrate communion, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a life in place of a life. In Matthew 26, 28, we'll get there eventually, but it talks about uh, you really should look at it because this is what Christ's death accomplished for you. Matthew 26 and verse 28. He said, For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. What did Christ's death accomplish? Well, it removed the wrath of God from us. It brought God's forgiveness. And Christ took our punishment on him in his body. Uh, that's what the atonement accomplished. Uh, 1 Peter 3.18, Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. And when we celebrate this, Jesus said, remember, Remember that I did this for you.